So if you're looking for your next react framework to build your next startup and absolutely only worry about the development process, why you leave the side the configuration and all the ugliness? Well, Redwood JS could be the framework for you. So Redwood is an awesome full stack framework that literally allows you to build amazing application. Of course, it's open source. And the most important part about Redwood is actually having a really awesome stack, it puts together really, really great technologies. So if you look at the GitHub repo behind Redwood, you're gonna find really great guys behind the scenes working on that. And among them, there is like Tom in here, which he was basically like a co founder of GitHub and, and many, many more contributors that are just like so shiny. So they made this framework shine up and they gave it absolutely awesome features that we all looking for as developers. And they give it like like a tight ecosystem to make sure that you work on features or you focus on development of your application and not focus on building the stack and configuration, all this sort of stuff. So I've been playing around with Redwood in here and for like a couple of weeks ago, and I really, really like the ecosystem and what Word would actually provides where it let you focus on the development of your application and instead of like going the configuration and all that sort of stuff. So one of the most awesome features I really love, which is like a mono repo. So Redwood, as I said before, a full stack like framework, which means it's gonna give you the web experience with the front end code, plus it's gonna give you as well like the back end code or the API and the database control and everything. And that where it actually shines up by putting all of those inside of a mono repo. And if you're not familiar with mono repos, are basically just putting like both the back end and the front end and every other service that is concerning your application into the same repository, which is an approach that is being used by Facebook and many, many big companies and startups. And also I found like very straightforward product setup. So just like it gives you everything that you need to set up using a CLI and everything. So you don't have to go through too many like details on how to set up the projects using Redwood CLI, uh, as well as this is actually using a jam stack. So this makes it look absolutely amazing with a lot of JavaScript like libraries and APIs and, and Jamstack is just really, really nice when it just comes to Redwood.js in here. Um, also like for the Yarn workspaces and it made it like really possible to make like mono repo and uses Yarn workspaces and no more learner because as we all know, learner now is like obsolete and it's no longer maintained. So it's better to use Yarn workspaces, which is like a shiny, you know, awesome tool to do mono repos. Great word in here gives you absolutely the best stack like most developers and companies are looking for now nowadays, which is like React with Yarn, uh, like a, a custom routing system. I think it uses React or behind the scenes, but it gives you its own custom routing system. It has GraphQL, it has Prisma in here for like the ORM, which is amazing. Uh, obviously no JS in here. And it gives you a storybook to make your like, you know, components uh, isolated. And it gives you a really awesome developer experience when it comes to that. Now for the actual project setup using the Redwood JS here, it actually gives you a CLI that you can easily use to scaffold and create a new projects with literally everything set up with you. So you got like either to choose JavaScript or TypeScript, obviously, I'm going to use TypeScript because it's a lot more powerful for us. And all you do is just yarn create. So you're going to use yarn in here. And I really like that Redwood JS utilizes yarn and its own underlying features like workspaces and like the create for scaffolding. It's really nice. So like yarn create, there is Redwood up, then you give it either TypeScript or JavaScript, and you're going to give it the name of your project. So literally, if you're going to go and copy this to go to my terminal, and I'm just going to you know, click on this. And once that is finished, you're going to end up with a project like this. So you're going to have a mono repo as that before, if you head over to the package.json, you're going to have workspaces, and you're going to have a bunch of packages in here, like API web, and you know, other packages, if you want to like include them separately in here. So for the API, this is is like where your API where your server is going to live. And of course, you're going to use some like the features provided by Redwood. So you're not going to be like worrying about setting up the like, express server and everything, everything is taken care of by Redwood for you. So all you need to do is go in like the, the GraphQL in here and you like you put the GraphQL uh, schema languages. And by the way, this is using GraphQL Redwood actually provides its own features for pre rendering for like static site generation. But likely for us, there is like a feature coming out, like, which is going to support SSR, it's going to make it pleasing fast, they're still like working on it right now. So if you're looking for SSR right now, I don't think like Redwood is going to be a great choice for you, maybe you need to head over for Blitz, which is a different framework. But I still think like Redwood is going to give you a really amazing performance when it comes to all of that. So to see the full potential of what Redwood is actually 
capable of doing. I actually tried to create a demo project in here using Redwood and which is just a simple to do, but it has like authentication, it has database, it has login and register and forget password and it works really, really well. And it just like does the job of showcasing of how Redwood works and how it actually can manage different stuff. So first, the like main important part of Redwood and what I really enjoy is actually its CLI and it allows you to literally control everything with the Redwood CLI and I really like that. So if you're familiar with like PHP Laravel framework, it has its own artisan kind of like CLI that allows you to do magical stuff. This is going to be the same thing for Redwood in here where Redwood is literally just like so flexible and can do a lot of stuff. So to use the CLI, you need to use Yarn and it's not like installed, but it's a binary installed inside of like projects itself in here. So you're going to have Redwood, so you can use Redwood or RW for like a shortcut, which I'm going to do in here. And you can do dash dash help to see the actual CLI, which as I said before, you going to have a lot of commands, a lot of stuff that you can do exclusively like from consoles to interactive shells and deploying and migrations of Prisma. So let's start for example, in a simple way. And of course, because this is actually mono repo. So you don't want to just access every single repo and run it separately. So to do that, I'm going to use yarn RW and I'm going to do dev. So once I click enter, this will go ahead and actually start up a development server. It's going to use Webpack. It's going to use Nodemon. It's going to do a watcher for you everything literally. So it's going to open up a port 8910, which is very easy to memorize. I like the port number. Uh, I have a problem with like memorizing port numbers for some reason, but I think this is a very good idea. I just use just you know, it's pretty simple and straightforward port number in here. So for example, there's actually nowhere to do and everything in here is saved into the database. So it's persisted and as you see, I'm when I refresh or something, I, I still get that you can like block those you can you can do plenty of stuff. So for example, in here, we can go to the login in here to actually be able to log in and you can actually sign up login plenty of stuff. So I'm going to go in and log into my account as you see, I'm already logged in, I can go and log out and as you see, I can just, you know, like say, Oh, I'm done with this. Uh, create vid tutorial, something like this, click enter and all of those are going to be saved. So this is all working fine. It's actually a full stack It's working from the front end side from reacts with GraphQL and everything and sending all the data back to the back end API server that is running on Redwood. And it's saving the actual data into Prisma, which is a really awesome ORM that can literally work with any database clients from MySQL, Postgres to SQL clients and many, many more. So if I want to like, go ahead and walk through the actual projects, I'm going to specifically start with the API in here. So for example, let's say I want to look into how to do the database connection and everything. So instead of the lib in here, you're going to have a db.js. And most of the times, as soon as like you use Redwood in here, the CLI is going to generate that for you. It's going to do the installation. It's going to have, you know, most of the code in here ready for you, uh, unless you know what you're doing. So you don't need to mess up with this. So there is actually, for example, the handle Prisma login here, which is exported from Redwood.js, which is, you know, the library that's been installed. And there is the Prisma client in here, which you do to actually connect to the database. Database. And this will give you like an instance of the database that you need to be connected to. Now, if you head to the DB file in here, you're going to have your database. Now, right now, by default, Redwood for development purposes only gives you to use SQLite. And why I was actually searching why Redwood like does give you SQL by default, of course, you can change that to my SQL on any server you want, but it gives you my like SQL for by default for development purposes only to make it fast, reliable, and you can control your databases and you can actually, you know, put your database with, with the actual source code in here. And, and, and I really like that. So as you see the schema, well, the schema under Prisma in here, of course, you need to be with like Prisma and how it works. So this is our database schema and all the tables, the models and everything. These are our database. And you can see like from the different stuff. And of course, in here, we would tell you to use SQLite provider, and you can change that very easily. And now when it comes to services are actually a way that allows you to access the underlying database and tables and actually manage the records and the the, like the data inside of that. So for example, you can do to do's, which is a function that's going to return like find many from a database or create a new one, or literally just go ahead and update one because of course, you're using the Prisma plugin and the database instance we created. So you can do all of those. And of course, scenarios in here, I give you like examples, what are like the uh, like expected example return value from that, which is pretty good as well can be used by Redwood in here. And testing, of course, you can use just in here, which is fully integrated inside of Redwood. So you don't 
don't have to worry about that. And when it comes to the actual graph queue on here, and here's like where you put your schema definition language or the SDL language, this is where it does exist. So the SDL in here is gonna like, you put all the types that the application is gonna use like a to-do. So what, what does the to-do have like ID, body, status, and there's like a query, there's probably like a mutation in here and so on and so forth. And of course, using directives, you can, you can control like maybe this authorization is required or authentication is required to access this route for creating a to-do or not, which I have in here like require auth, which is a directive provided by Redwood. And that directive, all it does is gonna go ahead and require authentication for that particular route of the SDL. And of course you can go in and customize that, create your own directive for handling different types of stuff. But here by default, there's the require auth and the skip auth. And for functions, I like a special file that allows you to access and customize Redwood's functionality like authentication. So you use the handler in here and you're gonna customize the context of how Redwood is gonna be working. Uh, there's a GraphQL one. This is where just, you know, it's gonna do the like initiating the GraphQL server and making it all work together. And of course, just like that, it would work fine. And because Redwood is actually configured to have all those like the, you know, the same folder structure and it would know what to do with that. So as soon as like you define your, your GraphQL schema and you have your functions or services are right with a database connection, everything is gonna be working fine and you're gonna be able to like, you know, have all of those very easily without doing like, for example, if you're Express, you're gonna be doing like a middleware, you're gonna be doing a lot of like complicated stuff where it doesn't need to be, you need you don't need to actually repeat yourself and repeat the same code over and over again, where you can just have this abstracted way and you can just make it super easy. And of course, for other complicated stuff, Redwood has its own like custom stuff to run, you know, custom handlers or custom methods. And the second most important part of this, which is the web experience or the web folder in here, which has the actual React application. And it's not only a React application, it's a fully fleshed application that controls literally everything. And it's like pre-rendered, and it has the ability to pre-render if you like doing static site generation by Redwoods. And most importantly for all of those, it has its own like routing system and you can have pages and many more. And throughout the single line here, you can actually scaffold and generate different stuff from like pages, layouts, and, and like components in here, like the add to do and everything. That's crazy because user storybook has this is actually a pretty awesome setup. So for example, you can do like the Redwood single line here, we're gonna do generate and I'm gonna generate a page. I'm gonna name this page like my own page or something. And once you click that, it's of course gonna go in and create a page for you instead of the pages folder. As you see, my own page has been just added and it's gonna add everything necessary from testing files to literally everything. And what I really like about that, so you're just gonna give you the routes. So the routes is gonna automatically include this my own page. As you it does my own and it has pretty awesome naming. It's, it's pretty, like smart with naming the pages in here and putting the components together. It's it's voila, it's, it's very easy and I really like that. And for example, if you're looking for authentication, actually Redwood provides you with authentication out of the box. So if you head over to the login page, you're gonna have, it's actually using this use auth hook, which is provided by Redwood JS auth module in here. And it's gonna give you like, is it authenticated? You're gonna give you a function or a method to call when you wanna log in or when you wanna sign up, uh, when you wanna like reset the password. And of course you can handle all of those using React, maybe just call this login in here with the corresponding data and this will make it just go ahead and log in and like communicate through the GraphQL and everything, which is, it makes a lot of stuff for, like very easy. For example, the sign up, you can do that same thing with the use of the reset password in here, literally the same thing. You can do like reset password, which is another method and that should like be working fine with this. And before concluding, there is like, like upcoming features from the Redwood team that I'm absolutely looking forward to, which is React 18 and bringing all the features to the table of RedwoodJS and most importantly, the SSR or the edge rendering, which will look absolutely amazing. It would give like RedwoodJS an alternative to Next.js or any other SSR framework.